Revelation 3498. From the 26th of July 1945. Spiritual Guides. Spiritual guides are given to people on earth, partly embodied among them as people themselves, partly spiritually influencing them, thus no human being is completely left to himself during his earthly life. These spiritual guides are constantly in action as soon as the human being is in distress of the soul and does not stubbornly resist their help. That is, the human being must want to be helped, he must feel his need and strive to come out of it, he must therefore feel his spiritual state to be deficient and desire to improve it, then the spiritual guides are willing and also entitled by God to assist him. The assistance is granted to people in the form of enlightenment about the purpose of earthly life on their earthly task. For the knowledge of this must first be presented to people so that they can then fulfill their earthly task. People have to be entrusted to spiritual guidance because they are completely blind in their lack of knowledge and would never find the right path on their own. A guide will therefore always be with them from God but they themselves will be unaware of which kingdom is their home. Even the spiritual guides living among them as human beings are not recognized as such because otherwise a certain compulsion of faith would be exerted which would be an obstacle to spiritual development. Nevertheless, every teacher on earth has to be an emissary of God, otherwise his teaching could be doubted. But God's opposing power also seeks to gain influence on people, and this influence will always contradict the pure, truth from God. Therefore, it is always important to check whose share it is that people try to present to their fellow human beings as truth. The right spiritual guidance can always be recognized by the fact that it tries to distract people's thoughts from earthly things and wants to turn them towards the spiritual kingdom. Spiritual guidance seeks to influence people mentally, it seeks to encourage loving activity, it seeks to dissuade people from material striving, and it places the loving, wise and omnipotent deity in the foreground. Spiritual guidance takes little interest in earthly life but constantly directs thoughts towards the spiritual kingdom. And as soon as a person strives towards this goal, as soon as he tries to introduce his fellow human being to the spiritual kingdom, he is given to people by God as a guide and well suited to assist them in spiritual adversity for he merely prepares the field so that the spiritual invisible guides can scatter their seed and, through mental transmission, introduce the human being to spiritual knowledge, so that they can stimulate him into loving activity and thus exercise their office as guides and look after the souls entrusted to their care. However, if people are of a worldly mind, they will not listen to the spiritual guides. Neither fellow human beings will be able to instruct them, nor will spiritual forces have any influence on them, for the voice of the world drowns out the subtle voices from the spiritual kingdom. And as long as the human being is still bound by matter he lacks all understanding for spiritual gifts. Then it is difficult to win their souls, they withdraw from the care of their spiritual guardians. They do not pay attention to their thoughts and are not loving and willing to love. On the other hand, they give ear to those who allow themselves to be used as an instrument of God's adversary in order to convey error to people. For error is acceptable to them because it is compatible with their desires and lusts, with their worldly senses. Their knowledge, however, is ignorance, it lacks all truth. It is human work and human thoughts which mislead their fellow human beings and cloud their power of realization. Truth only comes from the spiritual kingdom and only spiritual guides sent by God convey it. Their work, however, depends on the will of the people themselves. Amen.